welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, although new, no, not necessarily a newcomer to me. The madman behind get behind um, Dave Khan, as well as the founder of Angry Dwarf, and now and now kickstarting the card game Cutthroats and Thieves, the one and only Victor Darso, better known as the Scourge of the North, Vic D. How you doing today, man, or tonight? I am doing wonderful. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming on to the temple. It. You have no idea how... I have one question to ask. Am I required to be drinking a beer at this point? Optional. Optional. Okay. <laughs> because if, you, if it was, I'd have to run upstairs quick and grab one. Mm -hmm. So. No, I don't... No, it's... It, it, well, I certainly will because, well, I have, I, have to drown, I have to drown the pain of watching the Vikings every week somehow. Oh, well... <laughs> I tuned in and immediately tuned out when I when I when I saw they were playing yesterday. So I'm with you in that camp. Mm -hmm. oh. Or just the pain of be of being a sports fan in Minnesota. Period. Yeah, yeah. It, it just it's just one of those things. I think the uh, players get too frozen at the end of the season to, to attend camp. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe. <sighs> maybe um... Maybe maybe we should have a return of the ice bowl. Maybe. Or ha or have um have it, ha have it mandated that every game has to be played out has to be played outdoors even in the winter. Well, you know, with the new Viking stadium, they could just open those doors and it would be just as cold in there as it is outside if they if they think about it cuz isn't that uh isn't that um, stadium pointed toward the north. Those doors pointed towards the north. I could open yeah. those doors up, and it would be it would be nice and blustery inside there. I think they're afraid of birds getting in because um, there's been, there was a problem of the um, of the windows being being too clean, so bir and thus birds thought they could fly right in and didn't. Oh well. There's always screen doors. Mm -hmm. But no, with with that said, as I understand it, Cutthroats and Thieves is a car is a card game that's meant to be one one that can be played very quick very quickly or 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 for the long game, depending on how people want to do it. But it is all it is all about well th well thieves trying to backstab each other for the best loot. Correct. So, how did was this? It was this something that you had um, co that had been tooled around with due to a, due to a campaign? What was the origin story of Cutthroats and Thieves? I was driving around one day and I was on a phone with a friend named Don Zabor of Wizard Tower Games. We were chatting about games and and things and um. Uh, he was talking about somebody was developing another game. It wasn't like Cutthroats and Thieves, but they, they were having hard time with the mechanics and this and that. And it was a real, since you used uh, swear words before, a shit show, as, as he could say. Because he was trying to work with them, and he said he finally gave up, and he threw up his hands, and he says, he says they're never going to get their act together. The rules are too complicated, too long, and it just... You know, it, did, it didn't make sense on what they were doing. So as I was driving, um, I just started making notes in my mind of how, how I would want to do it. And then using my Dungeons & Dragons, my 40 years of Dungeons & Dragons, and the, all the games that I've played with my mother and others, uh, card games, I started forming a small idea. When I got home that night, I... I wrote down a bunch of ideas related to thieves and cutthroats and then 
sort of said, we need something to be a little different from other games. So there's actually two ways to win in this game. You can either collect 100 gold coins, or you can collect four parts of a single relic. And those relics are based on the Norse mythology currently. Mm -hmm. um, there will be other game sets that, that have like Egyptian and Greek and other mythologies. But right now it's like the four parts of Thor's hammer. You would get these cards. If you collect all four parts of it in your hand, you throw it down, you win the game, or you collect 100 gold points or gold coins, you throw those down, you win the game. So that's that's where it came from. And then we have different rules on each cards. There's gold coin cards, there's action cards, and then there's the relic cards. So you know what's going on, and there's different things you do with each of those cards mm -hmm. so it is so. i can i can presume that it's get, that no matter how many players are there that everybody's drawing from the same deck is it a case where All people right. are draw, drawing a starting hand and then playing one card for each turn yes you uh everybody gets eight cards to start and whatever you get in those eight cards is what you get to play with now, there are ways that you don't ever have to discard. You don't, you don't discard if you don't want to. That's how you can collect your 100 points, your gold coins. Or you can discard if you want to. Different cards, different actions. For instance, I can give you like a random card here. I've got a deck sitting in front of me. It's my first deck ever I made just with... Uh, this is for a tip for anybody who wants to create a card game. You can go on Amazon and buy a deck of 500 poker cards blank. And then you just use address labels to put uh, the value of those cards on each of those on each of those blank cards. And you have yourself your playing deck. And you can test your game out numerous times with that and not have to replace the... Um, replace the uh, stickers or anything else and you're not going to print and you're wasting time paper and money doing that this is it's a super cheap way to develop a card game mm -hmm. so uh, here's a here's an example one of my cards is called the sleight of hand take two of your cards this is the rule on it it says take two of your cards and blind switch them with someone else mm -hmm. so you take two of your worst cards in your hand let's say they're one gold coin cards you take those gold coin cards and you hand them to somebody else and you randomly pick out of their hand two cards for yourself maybe you get lucky maybe you don't there's some ultra powerful cards in here and then there's some ones that really don't matter so you are blind switching and then you can do there's other cards that that even get more nasty like assassination where you hand it to another player and they are forced to give up everything in their hand. And they go back to having, let's say they have 97 points. I've, this has happened to me. I've had 97 points in my hand, gold coins. And my son laid a assassination card on me. And I was forced to give up all 97 points and every other card I had in my hand and pick out eight brand new ones out of the deck and start all over again. So... Yeah, that is that is like the ultimate card in the deck currently to make another player go back to the start you know don't go don't go don't go past go start all over again you know so. and, pro and probably um, cause some salt in the process oh there's lots of salt there's also a way when you're playing the game it's called the lockbox card these lockbox cards you can put three coin cards all coin cards are is one coin to ten coins now, using this lockbox, you can put those coins inside your lockbox. So you can have up to 30, 30 coins inside a lockbox. But the problem is, during the game, if a, an opponent gets a burglary card, they can take your lockbox from you. They've snuck in, they took your lockbox from you, and it's no longer yours. Unless you have an ambush card, which will stop a an attack like that, mm -hmm. and an ambush will stop anything besides a an assassination. Yeah. So, so. to reel things back a little bit, I'd like to yep. exam. I'd like to go into just exploring the anatomy of the cards. 
Now on the okay. Kickstarter, there is an example card with Ambush. And I, what I'm going to be doing is going into some of the elements of the of this particular card and what e what each um element is meant to mean. So okay. starting starting with the gold starting with the gold coin on the top left, is that the is that the cost? Is that how many gold coins that th that thing is worth? What is that meant to be? That's how many gold coins the that go how many gold coins that card is worth. Mm -hmm. So on the top right we have what looks like um, two rune stones. Um, so, what would what would that what would those rune stones entail? Okay, let me let me bring up that image really quick here. Mm -hmm. I'm not in there, but I will be there in half a second here. In actual time uh, or restaurant time? Um. Uh, well, I'm there. <laughs> Rune stones. Which which picture are we looking at here? Ambush. Ambush. I have ambush in my in my hand here. Um, ambush is, and looking at the looking. At, I'm trying to find the image you're looking at. Um, the assassination. I'm going down. Ambush. Oh, I see the ambush one. I see what you're where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. um, the ambush card. Uh, the, those little that little jewel on the top means nothing. It's actually a security feature for the cards. So oh. if we can, so if this ever gets copied by somebody, let's say in China, we're able to look at a card through a, a like a jeweler's loop or something and determine right away if it's a fake card or it's a real card. So it's a little sort of security feature we've put into it. Oh. Uh, just just to keep the uh, um, people. You know, people honest. And on the left hand side, up on the upper top, if you see that, it has a card value. That's a value card. That's mm -hmm. like it looks like a gold coin with printing in it. Yeah. That's that's called value. And we're we're right now we're creating rules for advanced tournament play on that, so that when you're playing, you can you let's say you get caught with a handful of cards and you screwed up the boot you screwed up well that that amount of value is going to be deducted from what you have in your hand so let's say you have 75 coins but you have a ambush card which is negative 15 i think it is or is that a plus 15 i'm looking through some cards right now for the value here i don't have my spreadsheet open right now to tell you the exact numbers uh because of I don't, you know, let's see here. I'm looking for it. Backstab is negative 25. Gold coins, gold coins, gold coins. Okay. Where are they? Where are they? Uh, I don't see it. Oh, dang it. I just, here it is. I found it. It's a, Ambush is actually a zero value card. It's neither good nor bad. So you can just hold that in your hand. Uh, the uh, the relic cards are worth twenty each. Ambush is negative fifty, or not ambush, but the assassination is like negative fifty. So you don't want to hold on to those cards to the end of the game because if you're playing the advanced rules, if you have that in there, you take a dive. You know what I mean? There's a big hit for your for your card count. So. Mm -hmm. So we're developing that. That that is being developed as we speak, and we plan to have that ready by the end of the Kickstarter. Yeah. So now it's just these those tweaks. You know what I'm saying when you're when you're developing a game. It's just making sure that those those little those little idiosyncrasies are worked out before the end. So now, sort of embarrassing when you need to uh, put out new rules midway. You know through distribution. Yeah. So now, obviously, right above the effects, there's the whole there's um event listed. So instead, what I'd like to ask instead is, what different types of car of cards are going to be present, and what each one of the what each one of those types entails? Okay. Let me pull it. I'll pull up my spreadsheet, and I will read them off to you. It makes it easier. Ah. Uh... There he is. 
All right. What you're looking at is the ones that, that are there. It's ambush. Wards off any attack against you except for an assassination card. Um, the assassination that's, card. That's you not, need to that, know how much. Yeah, that's that's not what I was um, asking specifically. And this, obviously, going through the effects okay. of, of each of the cards, I'm more referring to how in the ambush card it says event. So I'm cur and I'm curious what other uh, major types. Um, oh no, of... they're, they're, it's just it's, it's just what happens. It's the action. It should be we, we can we we're like I said, we're going through it. We can we can we can change that wording if somebody mm -hmm. thinks that it's not right. But that's what will happen if you play that card. Yeah, and I'm get. So I, I think I think what I'm curious about is um con is contrast that with say I say um item or go or gold those are two other um right the script those are there's the item cards there's the action cards there's the item cards there's the action cards and there's the relic cards mm -hmm. those are the three types of cards so with items is it a case where you where you're where you're putting it on on the table for everyone to see or how is it going to work nope you everything is closed hand you don't do any, you don't put anything on the table except for your um except for your lockbox card which you keep face up and you take your three coin cards and slide it underneath so that nobody knows what the, the value you have in a lockbox so you could be your hand could be loaded with let's say 10 coin cards, nine coin cards, but you've been ditching inside your lockbox, um, uh, sort of like a bait and switch. You're baiting and switching people that you in your in your in your lockbox, you only have three coins in it, you know, one coin cards each. So when somebody uses a burglary card, they come in and they grab that, they grab your uh lockbox. And you don't care. You know, it's just like, well, you just wasted your burglary card, and now it's in the in the discard pile. Nobody else can get it, and I've fended off an attack. Sure, it cost me three coins, but it it really doesn't bother me any. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, since everybody's starting with eight cards, have there been any instances of, pe of people just having ridiculously large hands? Um, late game. Uh, yes, that's where the assassination card comes in, and those people usually get wiped out before the end of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I can... And mm -hmm. all right. Well, to fo to follow to follow up on on that, I know you said that yeah. the that um the goal is to get that one of the goals is 100 but within the rule within the rules do you plan on putting any space for variant rules if somebody wants to lower the cap in order to ha in order to have a quicker game or anything like that that's always up to the that's up to the um i don't know that the dealer and, and the group at large you can do that if you want to but we put it at 100 because we figured that would be the good waypoint. We were at 50. The game went too fast. But at 100, it, it seemed just about the right time. You can get through a game in about 20 minutes. And unless the players are really a throat. And then it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get it done. Well, being cutthroats is in the name, so. Right. And it just depends on who's playing it too. I've played this at, um, I played it at Dave Con. I've played it at Gary Con, and I've played it at Grog Con down in Florida. And uh, dependent on the group, it went really fast or it went really slow. What really gets people um, a fast game is if they're looking for the relic cards, and that's all they're collecting is they collect the relic cards. And then all of a sudden, somebody will, out of the blue, you know, you'll look at them, they'll have 12 cards in their hand or something, they lay down four relic cards, and you're just like, where did this come from? You know, that's the that's the wild card factor in mm -hmm. it. And then you've got 
you know, you also you've got that counterfeit cards inside the deck too that are the same value as is the same value and function as any other card in the deck except for the assassination card or a or an Arella card. So you can use those to swipe cards from other players, uh, change it into a backstab card, which would get you 25 gold coins from another another player. Um, there is, you know, I've built in those wild factors into the game that that you know you will look at your friend across the way and thinking, oh, he's not going to do that to me, and all of a sudden, you know. That's why I have the theme in it is nobody's your friend in the end because that's how wild the game can get. Mm -hmm. And with that, I, with that yeah. in mind, um, what would you say? What would you say has been the sweet spot when it comes to the number of players? I know that you have it on, up front that it's um, ranging from two to six. But what's the biggest it's that you've about, ever tried? I've had five in here, and and with an expansion pack, you can easily do seven. Um, when you add more cards in, you know, like each expansion pack, you can basically put two more people into the game, and you can play it as a party game because everything's going wild. You don't you don't know what's going on. You don't know who's got what card what they're going to do next. It's one of those, um, you know, you remember you're the game Uno and stuff yep. like that. Think of it as, think of it like Uno meets poker meets 500. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just sort of, all these things together in different rules and diff different, amalg you know, uh, it's an amalgamation of the rules and there's only like seven rules to the game. It's not everybody thinks that, you know, there's going to be like all these super hard rules, but there's only seven rules to the game. So. It would have been funny if it were, eight, if there were eight rules, given that you draw eight cards. <laughs> well, I could probably stick one in, but I don't know. I, maybe the eighth rule should be have fun. No, the it's eighth, just the eighth, a card game. The eighth rule should, the eighth rule should be watch your back. All right, there you go. There you go. That's a good one. I mean, it Have is. fun and watch your back. Mm -hmm. um, now, with the, with that in mind, I'm cu I'm curious if there are if um any card that's played is one that is one that would be played on their on someone's turn, or are there certain cards that someone could play out of turn? Um, uh, no, you cannot play out of turn. You are always playing in turn, and there is a card in here that makes somebody else stop and they cannot do a uh that turn you know sort of like uno where you get skipped mm -hmm. it's the same thing it's called poisoned you throw the card at that opponent anybody you want and they are not allowed to play the next you know that that hand and it skips to the next person after that yeah. so yeah that we do have a poison card in there that that takes care of that that part of the game mm -hmm. Now, with that in with that in mind, it's funny you mentioned Uno because I've had the running gag for the for the longest time that nobody plays Uno as written. True. And, and the makers of Uno know about it because I remember when I was in high school and there was a um, custom Uno de Uno um, box that had a bunch of extra cards that had user submitted house rules. And hell, oh. we. Even even my group had their own had their own version, what we called penalty box, where the goal was to ha was um to not have the most cards in your hand, because whoever oh. had the most would get put in the box. Oh, that's a neat that's a neat rule. I've never heard of that one before. Mm -hmm. And of of course, when you're in the box, you're you have to skip. You are skipping the round, so everybody wanted to make sure they weren't. Um, the one getting the one getting skipped. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's sort of what the assassination card sort of does to you when you know you're sitting there, you're getting ready to, you know, you're you're thinking you're 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 counting cards in your hand, and you're and you're like, you know, I 
I watch the other players myself when I'm when when they're playing against me. I'm saying I'm watching them if they're counting cards in your hand. I know they're starting to get close, and if I'm holding that assassination card, they will get assassinated, hmm. and their whole hand gets wiped out. You know, yeah. it, it's it, I am I purposely do that. Mm -hmm. And the I will I will note one of the other house rules that we that we've used was um was ha was having it that instead of instead of um reverse do, um shifting the turn order no it ju it just right. means everybody has to um chain switch switch hands with the with the person to their left yeah that that's in the advanced we're we're starting to develop an advanced deck that does the same thing except for there's going to be wrinkles in it mm -hmm. there's um there's there's new god cards that are based on the Norse mythos that we are developing. But as you know, uh, when you're developing a game, you sort of go through um, different iterations and stuff like that. And I want to make sure that the game flows smoothly. Like uh, there's a there's a card in another, that's a shield maiden card. That will block an assassination attack. Okay? So, I mean, these are part of the advanced stuff that we're looking at and developing and trying to work out things. So that it's 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 uh, it's uh, still easy to play, but it gives more options. Like, if you it threw down a card, it might, they might have a card that says, everybody shift their hand to the left or shift your hand to the right and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So... We're, which, we're working on that. So which, that could probably mine some salt. So ever anybody playing should probably stay hydrated, because all that salt right. will make you thirsty. <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, I, I've my mother has played it with me a couple times the game, and uh, my mother generally doesn't use swear words, but you know when she played this game with me and she learned it, she was she, there was a couple cuss words that came out. <laughs> So, so you know, you can imagine an eighty-year-old woman just, you know, giving her 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 two cents. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and I've certain. Well, um, wor worst case scenario, best or worst case scenario, you could always implement. You could always implement the swear jar. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you could. I know, it's or you can, or you could do it, or you could do it. Another rule you could do is, if you want to think about this, is you could also do the turn in a coin card if you swear. So, it, whatever coin cards you got in your hand, it could be, oh, you got to put it in the bottom of the, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. you swore you're going to put it in the bottom of the uh, the discard pile, you know. See, I so. I can't do that because some because some of my players um speak multiple languages, so what they'd probably do is just curse in a, in a language I don't know. <laughs> And you, you know how it is when some when some folk will break into another language and whenever at um at completely random intervals, um yep. there's no there's no way I can just call them out when they say a different la when they say something in a different language and I can and I can go you swore, and, <laughs> um yeah, so in, instead I instead I just have the bad pun jar. Oh, there you go. You can always implement those rules. Mm -hmm inside the game and do whatever you want i mean there could be you know if you uh did movie quotes you know i've heard that one before if somebody quotes a movie you you know there there's a penalty for that you know you know you're not trying to quote a movie or a or a certain you know phrases and stuff you know yeah this is at the end of the day a party game so instead of, in, and there's always a degree of stupid when it comes to party games but i've always argued if you're gonna go stupid, don't half-ass it. <laughs> yep. Go whole ass with the with the aggressive stupidity. Oh. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do, you yeah. know. <laughs> now, with that in with that in mind, were there any ca were there any cases of a particular card or or something where you thought where you thought you had where um. You thought you had an idea on how it was going to get used, and then it ended up being used in a way you didn't exactly plan for. Oh yeah, the uh, the 
when I was starting developing the game, we were playing just playing it with my four sons. Uh, the counterfeit card was was we had to put limits on it. Uh, originally, there was no limits on it for the assassination or the um, relic card, and people were ending the game in five minutes. You know, it was like it was it was just too stupid, too fast. So, what I did is I put those put the brakes on that card uh, because that card was coming out and being used in too powerful. You know what I mean? There was just too powerful of ways that it was being used so it was that's why i had to pump the brakes on that card so mm. um and, and and you know that was the main one that really really and the ambush card too was you know that was used to stop an assassination too so and i had to have one card in the deck that nobody wanted in their hand but they also wanted to use it so that's why the assassination card is there. You don't want to hold on to it, but you want to use it as you know and get rid of it in any expedient manner, because holding on to it, like I said, will cause you to uh, lose fifty points at the end of the end of the turn or what or end of the game and stuff like that in the advanced rules. So mm -hmm. that cer that certainly makes sense. Now, with that in with that in mind, um. You've you you've um shown you've shown this at um, cons. How e was it relatively easy for for people to get into the rules, or were there some were there some aspects of the rules that some people had um a bit of a hurdle to get over? Uh, within three minutes, three to five minutes, everybody had the rules down. Uh, because there's like I said, there's only seven rules to it, and it was it was just that quickly. They've got the hang of what they needed to do. And sometimes they would ask questions mid-game, but that was just because I needed to retranslate how the cards were made. So to me, it was just an easy fix when I got home and I was able to print off another mailing label with a changed wording on the card, and it was made better. You know what I mean? I've had... Uh, I had an English teacher play with me down at um, um, GrogCon in Orlando, uh, which is also Crucible, and she made a suggestion on a card that actually made more sense to me, and I implemented that change. Mm -hmm. So it, it's all into test playing, you know. I mean, test playing is is what you need to do. I mean, my first module, uh, Keep Up Blood Red Falls, I ran that for two years at or at Gary Con and around the metro here in Minneapolis a couple times for people to get people's advice and input on it before I published it. You know, I, I I like to I like to take my time and make sure things are just right. You know what I'm saying? So that so that uh, the reviews don't come back or people come back and say it's a steaming pile of dog doo doo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, with that with that in mind, um, when what would you say what would you say would be the release window that you have that you have in mind for for the thing? Uh, we will have this. We are just waiting on cash currently from the Kickstarter to get this started printing. If we got over the nineteen hundred dollar mark tomorrow, the printer has said to me. Uh, uh, and he would he would start printing the cards within seven days, and then we would send those out by January tenth or so. We would have everything ready, and they would be out the door to, to everybody's home by the end of the January. So that's all we're waiting on is just a little bit of money to get the printing started on the cards, so that we can get them out. And then after we get them out to the first, uh, however many people, the introductory set, uh, then we're going to start sending them out to stores and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I will be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for 
taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness that happens here. And anytime you see you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around right. here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Sounds good to me. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers, presents and not, and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>